Okay, we're gonna starch genes. Why would you starch genes? Why would this be something that you would need to learn how to do? One would be is it's expensive and maybe you wanna do it cheaper. And two, it's a good way to make genes look nicer at home. This would be for different events where you need something more than just an ironed and cleaned gene. If you like this video and wanna see more content just like this, after the video, go ahead and click subscribe and hit like. And if you wanna have us discuss anything that we haven't talked about yet, put that in the comments as well. So let's get going. So first we're gonna do this with stuff that you should have at home. If you don't have um, starch at home, that's something you can pick up really any big box retailer. This I got from Walmart. Um, quickly, I'll just talk about this. There's different levels of set on starch. I'm not gonna try to pretend to know how all that works, but if you're going to do jeans, you're gonna want you know, a harder set or the crispier version. So when you go, just don't grab anything. It will still work. You'll just won't get, you know, as, as um, you know, cardboardy style of um, starch that you're looking for. Um, I don't starch jeans a ton myself as far as on the daily, but it's something I think you need to know how to do. You would do this um, if you're going to go to maybe a wedding or something, and it's it's not going to call for slacks, but you'll need to have, you know, nice nicer jeans. So having the jean. Now having your um, desired starch and then an iron. Now, when I used to do this when I was a little bit younger, I would get the gene basically ironed and ready to go, and then I would go back and starch it. Um, you could do that if you're worried about starching the wrong you know, spots or something like that. If you wanna bypass it, you can just go right at it. So you have your gene, and for the most part, figuring out how to fold your genes in the proper fashion so that this puts this nice center crease in there, that's gonna be more critical probably than anything else. So we'll talk about that. Um, but make sure your iron is on as hot as it can go, maybe just a little bit down. You're gonna need to build up quite a bit of heat in order to get um, basically the perfect crease to happen. So these are a pair of Levi uh, jeans. This is the 517 model. You can do this with any. Um, these are great if you're looking at certain types of jeans. These have a, a boot cut, so the bottom is bigger. Um, and so obviously that's gonna work well for me. It's got a little bit slimmer thigh uh, there, but once again, like I said, it's going to work basically the same no matter what you have. So the first thing to do is fold just one pant leg at a time. Now, if you're starting with a jean that has wrinkles, you know, everywhere, this isn't a new pair or something, maybe do go ahead and just lay it down and uh, iron those out, but we're gonna fold it to where um, there is a center basically in half uh, right here. So there's a center crease. So as you go, there's the two stitch sides of this, the two seam sides. You're gonna line those two up together, just like that. The hard part is going to be trying to get that to be uh, folded that way all the way back. So what I do is I like to be on the inside of the jean instead of the outside. So where the inside of your leg would be. And I'm gonna lay it down, try not to knock everything off burn the house down. And I'm just going to lay this gene flat as best I can. And as you can see, it's not the easiest way to do this. Let me take it off of here and at least get it partly. You'll find that the halfway marker almost lines up with the back of the back hip pocket. So if you're trying to just get it close, maybe grab your pocket and then grab your center line. I need to give myself a little more room. My legs have gotten longer since Last time I did this, apparently. Okay, so you're, you've got it laid out pretty flat. You're on the inside pant leg. You can do this on the outside as well, but I'm just gonna take my hand and run it along the seam and make sure that that seam is still matched up both front and back. Trying to make sure that there's not big creases. Now, I will tell you this. Jeans that have a boot cut or a tapered leg are going to have basically a narrowing at the knee and then get bigger. So this is actually a little bit more difficult with this style versus maybe a straighter leg. Um, so just don't be discouraged. You're not doing anything wrong. That's the way the gene is made. So I'm just checking this center line the whole way up. Once I feel like it's pretty good, I'm going to start with the very bottom of the gene and get it flat. And I'm not going to use any starch. If you're worried about burning your gene, you can use some water to get that started and that'll just keep it from doing that. The goal is to get this gene as flat as possible all the way across and correctly lined up. You will, <laughs> I've already moved it just a little bit. You don't wanna add starch until you have this started pretty good. So when I was younger, I would do this kind of methodically 
over and over and over till it was perfect. Then add the starch. Once I feel like I've started it pretty good, I'm not worried about putting a ton of heat in any one spot. Just get it nice and flat. Checking the center line over and over and over. Once I have that started, I'm going to add starch. So I'm going to take the starch and I'm going to focus it where I want that crease to be the tightest or most per, um, prolific, which is going to be these outside edges. You can coat the gene. I've seen people take spray bottles of this stuff and like soak the gene and go back. I'm pretty sure when they do this at a um, dry cleaner, that's kind of how they do it. So I guess maybe start with a little bit, let it dry, see what you get, maybe add more the next time you do it. So I'm just going to spray a nice even coat on there. Be careful of your overspray. If you're spraying somewhere in your house, this is going to coat basically everywhere. So once it's on there, to activate it, to get it to work, get it hot, get the crease you want. Check that center line with your offhand. And if you're going to add extra heat anywhere, add it just on the edges and your corners. You're starching the whole gene, not just the edge. But that's where you want it to be correct. Now I'm going to pull my gene a little bit further down. Check my center line again. Because this is a tapered leg, this is kind of, kind of tricky. Feels good. I'm going to just iron up the leg, make sure that's flat. And I can feel a little bubble right here, which if I use starch at that moment in time, I would solidify that. So it's on the back side. You can't see it. And that has a lot to do with this taper. So sometimes with these taper pants, I'll, I will um, iron one side, then the other, instead of trying to work them together, because it is, I mean, very difficult to do. Use my starch, throw that, hit the cat, starch again. Here we go. Straight up, straight down. Now I'm going to work that opposite side to make sure my center line's good. Starch again. And I'm really just starching up to where the pockets are. And if I'm going to be focusing more on one area or another, it's once again, this outside edge. That's the crease we're trying to put in there. It's going to give a little more professional look. So once I get this side done, a lot of times I will let this cool before I start putting heat on the other side. That way I can double check that everything's right before I basically solidify it in there even more. So I'll flip over to this side. You can see that where I was trying to crease that a little bit, it it didn't get off center. It's just the taper of this leg is kind of showing itself. So I'll try to recorrect that, maybe split the difference. It's mostly going slow enough to make sure you're not ironing in a bad crease anywhere. So I'll just check that again. And especially on this outside edge, it's mostly already laying good for you. So this is where you can kind of not necessarily work faster, but maybe work a little more efficiently. We're going to coat this. And you can see, seems like a lot, actually less than what I've seen some people use. When you're going along, some of the starch by nature will kind of flake up and kind of what looks like come off. What I can tell you is that will just brush off once this dries, so don't be alarmed with that. The first initial starching of a pant is the hardest one. Once you do this, you kind of build in a memory or just a crease that will kind of stay even after you wash it and will make your next time even easier. So once you get that first one, the best way to, to walk away from this is to leave it where it's at so those creases don't change, it cools, it dries, because basically we're getting it close and then we're going to let it dry and then come back and do the other leg. Now, the top part of the gene, you can take this center crease and really run it all the way up and that's going to most likely, in my opinion, help keep that crease wanting to stay there. If you only do the bottom two thirds of the gene, it might not stay as well as you would like. So you can just, once this gene is dry, come up, really starch this upper third, upper quarter. This is where you really do need to make sure it's, it's square, because if you change that line, it'll be like a zigzag. So you can add some starch there. Be also aware of where the inner pocket is at. If it's crinkled, it might make a crinkled look there. But when this dries, this should have, if I do this right, it's going to be hard to see, a nice center line in the front, a nice center line in the back, and the gene will lay nice and flat. I'm going to show you, because uh, it's, I, in my opinion, it's good to see multiple ways of doing this, how to do this if you are going by a garage sale and see something goofy like this. I have one of those moms, I'm sure some of you do as well, that can't throw anything away. 
this is when that benefits you. So this is um, a pant stretcher. Some people will dry their jeans um, with these to make sure that they don't shrink, things like that. Um, this actually works really well to get your center line aligned really well. So I'm just gonna show you how to fit one of these in. If you don't have one of these, use the first method. It works really well. If you're lucky enough to, to find something like this, this works really well as well. So you'll stuff this in. There's a smaller end, jeepers, a smaller end and a bigger end. Smaller end goes in. I really, really, really like this method. Um, I've, I've heard of people actually using like a one by six and putting them in their pants just to get it started. I, I feel like that's a little aggressive, but it might work. So I'm just going to shove that down in there. Never pass a garage sale and see something like this and not take advantage of it. Now this is where this could get interesting. I've not starched these pants, obviously, but it's running into the taper of that leg, the same taper that was given me fits when we were going before. I'll see if I can feed it past that taper. Looks like I need to be a little more careful as I go. Well, it's going to make it. One way or another, it's going to make it. The reason why these are so nice is because all of that, um, you know, changing and struggling that I was having, getting um, that center line to stay there as I went around, this will make it so the gene is really stationary and doesn't do that. So you can already see that's holding it right there. All I have to do is line up my seams together, stretch it out, and you can iron your gene with your stretchers on. You have to be a little careful just because the, the uh, texture of that metal behind there could get hot. That could be an issue. Um, for the most part, you should be okay. Then I can go up here, stretch the top out. This just pushes out and catches the little barb. And now I can lay this nice and flat. You can already see why these are so handy and check my seam and my seam's not gonna move. I can already tell up here, I need to pull this over until it's right. And then I do the same process with all of it staying there. When I go to cool it, I can also use this and hang it um, uh, upside down so it'll cool with those exact lines in them. So most of you are not gonna have those. If you get lucky enough to find those, certainly use them, but you can get this done at home by yourself. You can see that nice line going down right there. If you don't feel like your line is stark enough or you feel like it's it's going to come out, iron them again, put more starch on them. They're going to stay that way. If you can, especially if this is a pair of jeans that you're going to keep for a long time, um, try not to dry them in a dryer after this time. Treat them like they're dry cleaning. Wash them like normal. Pull them out of the washer. If you have stretchers, put them on the stretcher. If not, fold them while they're wet in the way that they're supposed to go. If you can iron them while they're mildly wet, that's a good idea to do as well. But if you can try to not let these tumble and wrinkle, they will become basically kind of like a dress pant that wants to stay flat, wants to have that crease, and it'll make your job that much easier each time. So I hope for those of you who have never starched jeans at home, this helps you if you've um, done it for a little bit. Maybe I showed you a way that might make it easier. The biggest thing, slow down. Pay attention, make sure it's the way you want it. And then once you got it, it gets pretty easy.